powerful text. Now when I'm looking, when I'm preparing these sermons, all throughout here I just see God's love just keeps on popping out at me. He cares so much for his people. He, did, this, he makes this known to us for us to reason on, to us to think about it. God gives us a mind. We have the, in Christ Jesus, we have the mind of Christ. See, so we can reason like this. Animals don't reason like this. Trees are alive, plants are alive, but they don't reason. We reason. The only reason that this is not seen rightly is because of flesh. Flesh doesn't reason. It doesn't reason rightly. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You see what the Spirit's doing here? It's called, the Spirit's calling us to reason on this. Let's think about this for a second. Just stop all your busyness, all your going through the motions of the world. This is stop. As believers in Christ Jesus, let's take a step back and think about this. Shall we? Shall we sin? Is this right for us to sin? After all that God has done for us, after all that Christ has done, shall we sin? Let's think about it. Come on. Sit down for a second. Take a breather. Let, your, let, your, let the mind of Christ just move in you and think, Amen. does this sound right? Now, I know... Flesh will say, well, yeah, let's sin so grace may abound. That's flesh. See, that, that's what, when people allow flesh to just have its way, this is flesh. The Spirit often will ask questions to get us to reason. I'll give you some examples. Romans 3, 5 says, if our righteousness Command the righteousness of God. What shall we say? Question mark. Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? Question mark. Romans 4, 3. What shall we say at the scriptures? Question mark. Romans 7, 7 says, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Question mark. Romans 9, 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Question mark. Galatians 4, 30 says, Nevertheless, what shall we say the scriptures cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. You see what I'm saying? The Spirit often does this. It, it, it's, it's asking the brethren, think about, use the reason that God has given you. Not as the world does, not as, not as animals. Animals don't think, they wake up. They, want to, they need to go find out how to eat and, and survive. That's, all, that's, the, that's what they do. Yeah. Everything's instinct. See, we're not animals. Amen. I know evolution will, will, will cause you to think, well, maybe I'm just a monkey. But we're not. We're, we got the mind of Christ. We're made in God's image. So we think, we think, we reason. We have the laws of God written in our hearts and put in our minds. As the Spirit reveals the answers, it is confirmation to our spirit, to what is really in us. The Spirit will ask these questions and, and give answers, and we will, this will be confirmation to our spirit. It will sound right to God's people who love and embrace the truth. This is the difference from just going through the motions, being under the law. Under law, we can see, the, under the law, they were able to um, even memorize scriptures, memorize, but they were never engaged to think about these things, to live them, to, to understand them. To, they just, you just go through the motions. You, you can go through the motions under the law, and that's, that's enough. But not in Christ Jesus. That's not enough. Amen. We think about these things. We give our mind to, to God. See, we're not under Satan's rule. Before we were, 
Before we, we came into Christ, we we're baptized into Christ, we we're under Satan's rule, but no, we're not anymore. We have, our minds are separated from these things for God's use. We, re we really don't want the things of the world anymore. We really do want, we've been changed. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We really do want what God has for us. We, re we really do reject what Satan has. He twists everything. He takes everything and he'll, he'll present it just as God presented it, but he's always got to put a little twist in there Amen. to mess things up. Flesh will always reason that it is okay to continue in sin. God understands. But see, this, God understands. Wait a second. God has done everything for us not to sin, for us not to be condemned. Flesh says, as a matter of fact, the more we sin, the more God pours out his abundant grace. This is not so. We do serve a loving God, to be sure. See how things get twisted up? We do serve a loving God, to be sure. But his love is, is keeping us from the wrath to come. Amen. Flesh says things like, well, we all sin. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, right? Isn't that, isn't that what scripture says? Well, I mean, if you hear the wrong thing enough times and you don't know what the scripture says, you're going to start believing it. That's the importance of us knowing the scriptures. God's love is unconditional. That almost sounds scriptural. It's been said so many times by preachers, doesn't it? God is loving. I'm going to, I'm going to say God is loving. But it's because of God, his love, that he has made a way for us not to be condemned. It's because of his love that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, that we may be, because of his death, we may enter into this death, and this, I'm going to get, talk about this in the baptism, we're going to enter into this, that we can be, because of God is just, he is righteous, he, 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 he's just made us, sanctified us, justified us, and made us, that we don't have to have this wrath come upon us. Justification rids us of sin. We can't go back to living it anymore. Amen. God's grace does not promote sin, nor does it excuse it. Amen. We don't want to go back, but flesh does. See, there, now there's where the dilemma is. Amen. We're still in this flesh that it wants to sin. But who are we? We are kings and priests in Christ Jesus. We rule over our bodies. Amen. To continue in sin is actually to turn from God, rejecting Jesus Christ, and the grace that has give, been given to us to reject sin. You are the one being unloving when you continue to sin. After all that God's done for you, it's not the other way around. To deny ungodliness and worldly lust, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, Titus 2, 11, 12, that's who we are in Christ Jesus. We, we deny ungodliness. God doesn't just tell us not to sin. He gives us the power not to sin. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. Any doctrine that gives comfort to sin because of grace will instead be the cause of God's wrath and indignation. Amen. God's wrath will be poured out because of this. Ephesians 5, 6 says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. See, in Christ Jesus, we're made obedient. We're no longer disobedient. The wrath is coming on the disobedience, to be sure. But see, God's moving us from the disobedience to the obedient in Christ Jesus. 
See, this idea that no one is perfect, you hear this over and over, just gets hammered in. No one's perfect. When did God say this? Give me the scripture, the verse where God says no one is perfect. Hey, I got a scripture for you. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. How about that one? That, that, that kind of goes against this. these things that have been said, hammered over and over. And Jesus even tells us, remember the young, the young rich ruler? He wanted to be perfect. He said, well, sell everything and follow me. Well, that means that when you follow Christ, you can be perfect. Yeah. Matthew 19, 21 talks about it. Jesus would not tell us to be perfect if it wasn't possible. In Christ, we can be perfect. As a matter of fact, we have this new man that is perfect. It does not sin. See, but the problem is, see, flesh doesn't consider wrath. But it's coming. God's people do consider this. God is love. And because of that love, he warns us of the wrath, and he makes a way out for us. Amen. Colossians 3, 6, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedient. So, brother, this is love, that we are moved to follow Jesus. He tells us what's going to happen, and he tells us the remedy, and he says, in Christ, that's where you need to be. Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Flesh will say, yes. That's what flesh says. Yes, why not? The Spirit says, God forbid. Or of course not. Another scripture, another verse, version says, of course not. Another one says, out of the question. See, this is out of the question. Sin does not encourage Grace. When sin was put to death, we were given grace to continue to live holy and righteous lives before God. Amen. God's grace makes us able to please Him. When we were in sin, we did not need grace. We needed repentance. We needed to turn from sin and to God. Because, of the, because we hate sin and have no desire anymore to live in sin, God's grace gives us the power to deny sin. Mm -hmm. Daily, we need this power. Every day, we need to wake up in the morning and deny sin. Crucify the flesh. Put the armor of God on. Amen. All who love God and His Son, Jesus Christ, have this evidence in them that they grow in the divine hatred for sin. They look for ways out, not to sin, and God provides them. Amen. By God's grace, sin is removed, and by the same grace, we will develop a, a godly rejection to sin, a perfect hatred for sin, just as God hates sin. See, this is how we grow in this. We will have eyes to see sin and reject it just as God sees it. We won't make up excuses for sin. We'll ask God to help us to find ways not to sin. Show us, show us your ways, Lord. Whatever you hate, I hate. I'm with you, God. Wherever you go, I go. Whatever you hate, I hate. Open my eyes. This is what, when you are a born again, new believer in Christ Jesus, you may not have all the answers, but you want to see things the way God sees them. Amen. And we will have eyes to see this. We will reason, how can I sin against God? I love God. If God loves me, he will understand. No. That's not what those in Christ say. They say, I love you, God. Show me if there's anything in me that you reject, I reject too. We are dead to sin. This is real. 
We cannot see it with our, the eyes of flesh. So we ask the Lord to, to show us if there be anything in us to help us to see it. Know ye not the spirit is one, once again asking God. Know ye not the spirit is once again asking God's people to reason with themselves. What really happened when we were baptized? Spiritually, we really died with Christ and, and made alive to God. By faith, this is known. Flesh cannot see this. So flesh cannot be, we, we cannot allow flesh to just have its way. By faith, we see that we are not alone in this experience. Know ye not that so many of us, as we're baptized, so many, we're not alone. There's a, you know, there's places where, or times where you may have felt like you were alone, but you're not alone in this. There's a number that cannot be numbered that's going to be in glory. So many, yes, many. The trick of the devil, you know what he does? He makes you feel alone. He'll, 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 he'll do things to make you, well, you know what? Maybe you're not seeing this right. Maybe you're the only one. See, no, we're not alone in this. Amen. We're not isolated in this thinking. Truth is truth. Uh, this is it's such a powerful tool that Satan uses to make people, God's people think that they are in a small number or alone. And therefore question, am I right? Who are you to think that you're perfect? You, things like this are said. No, we say no to that. We believe God. Amen. The Spirit will not use emotion as men do, but move God's people to think about what has happened when they were baptized into Christ. What really happened? As many as you were baptized into Christ Jesus... We're baptized into his death. See, we entered into this death. Dead to sin. Dead to the world. This leaves no room for sin. We are not helpless to continue to sin. We are dead to sin. I have no more to do with you, sin. Be done with you. We are now clean, justified before God. We are joined with Jesus Christ. Not only did Jesus die on the cross, we also died with him. We're joined with him in this death so we can reason. Can we be dead to sin and continue in sin? It doesn't make sense. Christ has nothing to do with sin, nor do we. We can reason that way. As we were baptized into Christ's death, all the effects of Christ's death belong to us. I, I have a few of them that I looked up here. We are joined with Christ to bring forth fruit, John 12, 23, 24, to draw all men to himself, John 12, 32, we're reconciled to God, Romans 8, 3. We might be made righteousness to God, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Through his poverty, we might be rich, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. We are de um, delivered from this present evil world, Galatians 1, 4. That we might be received the adoption of sons, Galatians 4, 5. We have been made nigh to God through Christ's blood, Ephesians 2, 13. This is a righteous move by God. His wisdom can be seen here. How he is in his love, too. His love and kindness towards his people. That he did not leave us in a, in a state, a wretched state of sin, that his wrath had to come on to, to us. He has separated us from that. Amen. The benefits are very long, to be sure, when we are joined to Christ and baptized into Christ. 
They flow from the death of Christ. The fruit of his death cannot be compared to anything else. This world, see, when you start reasoning this way, you just make sin just not appealing anymore. People do things because they think they benefit from them. And when you can reason that sin is not a benefit, it may change everything. But you have to reason on this. All the fruit now becomes ours in the baptism and to his death. Nothing can justify sin or the continuing in sin when we are baptized into Christ's death. How can we reason anymore that sin is something that is a benefit to us? It's not. It can't even compare to what we have in glory. In Christ, we are no longer obligated to sin. See? We can just say that when we're tempted. Now, we all have different things that we're tempted with. Christ was not tempted with the same things we were tempted with. He was tempted with turning stones into bread. When was the last time that happened to you? No, our temptations are different, but the fact is we have a way out. We do not have to continue in sin. When it comes, we have a way out. We can, we can reason. Sin cannot dominate us any longer, nor should it. A lot has happened before we sin. We've turned our when we when someone finally does sin, we I'm talking about we as a people, we will have to turn our back from God, turn away from the grace that's been, been given to us, the power that God has been given to us, and we there's a lot of thinking that it process reasoning that the reason I'm gonna sin now is because it's gonna benefit me in some way. But see, God's given us a way out. We can reason, no. This is not a benefit. God's not going to be pleased with me. And God has actually made a way that I don't have to do this. But we have to look for it. So we're no longer obligated to do this anymore. We are alive to God. And we can reason with God. We had a sin problem. We had a sin. I said we had a sin problem. God's answer to that problem was the gift of righteousness. It's all associated with our baptism into Christ. Why? So I, as I'm preparing this, I'm thinking, why would anybody argue with this? Because I know people who argue with baptism. Why, why argue with this? All the benefits that are associated with baptism are so great the only being blind to the truth would make someone not want to be baptized. But see, again, I'm going to go back to this. Satan has perverted and twisted the truth. Yeah. This is why it's out there. Nothing negative comes from being baptized in Christ. I couldn't think of anything negative. If somebody can think of something negative, go ahead and tell me. Oh, the only thing I ever have ever heard somebody say is, we don't have to be. Mm. Well, that's a bad reasoning. A good heart never will question, should you be baptized or did my baptism take? You're bapt if you're baptized into Christ's death, brethren, embrace that. And see the benefits that God has given you in this baptism. The blessings associated with baptism are, well, I mentioned a few, but we can go on and on. I think we could use the word here, awesome. I think it would be right to use that there. It's, it's Sister June is, is well said. It's been abused for different things, but this baptism is awesome, what God's doing in baptism. Whoever says baptism has nothing to do with salvation doesn't deserve to be argued with. The benefits are so great, it has everything to do with salvation. Whoever has a desire to be saved would not struggle or argue with this case. Christ's death has everything to do with it, everything to do with salvation, and in baptism we are baptized into his death, so we are joined with Christ. Amen. Anyone speaking against baptism or the great effects of it would have to overlook this text and should not be listened to. Baptism into Jesus Christ. 
it, it brings forth the love of God that sets us apart from his wrath. So you could be like this uh, Ethiopian eunuch. He, he reasoned with this way. There's water. What's stopping me? What, what's stopping me from being baptized? That was his reasoning at the end. If you could find water, you could be baptized into Christ and into his death today. All who already already baptized into God's grace, into his death, into God's grace, and can you can deny sin today. You can be because of this, God's given you grace to be able to deny sin and to embrace his righteousness, his holiness, and to be perfect in Christ Jesus. That's the truth, brethren. Thank you.